Hello everyone and welcome to Chat UTD. End of the Premier League, it's done, it's dusted. City won the league four in a row. The Premier League for me is becoming a massive bore because it's dominated by a team that's been allowed to cheat. They've got very clever lawyers so they get away with it and they can doctor books better than anything I've ever seen before in my life. It's like something out of a, um, a, a, a mafia crime documentary or something. Um, and the longer they're allowed to get away with it, the stronger they become because they just have to keep adding small pieces to the jigsaw all the time. The harder it is for other people to compete and the more boring it gets. Um, they're not an authentic football club, so I wouldn't, as a United fan, I don't worry about them taking our legacy or breaking our records because I don't need a, a court of law or a, a football court to tell me that they've cheated. I know they are. So... They'll never take our legacy away. So if you're a United fan tonight and you're feeling a bit down, I can't tell you how to feel. But I would say, um, to quote a song we used to sing in the early 90s, always look on the bright side of life. You know, I've said before, City are a piece of crap under our shoe. They always will be. And look out for some funny stuff doing the rounds in the next few hours of them attempting to celebrate because it's normally quite funny so I'm sure they're the gift that keeps giving aren't they so they'll, I'm sure they'll give us something to, to laugh about as uh, as the night goes on um, I've been watching the 99 documentary in the last few days I'm, I'm about halfway through it I won't give too much away but it's I look at that team I look at our United team in that era and Nostalgia is popular for a reason because we always believe, don't we, that the past was better than the current, um, the, than the present. And I'm sure in 20 years' time, people will look back to now and think that now was better than in 20 years' time. But I look at the rawness of it, I look at the heart of it, I look at the. Um, there was still something quite innocent about the game. It was moving into a more modern era. There was bigger money. There was. A cosmopolitan feel to it with more foreign players coming into the game. There was um, a different experience when you went to the match. There was a lot more on the TV and all that kind of stuff. So it was moving into a modern era, but there was still, as I say, that rawness to it. Um, there were still proper characters. There were still hard men. There were still um, great stories about personalities. And I think that United team, it wasn't perfect, and that's what... True perfection has to be imperfect, and it's that. Um, it's that with with our team. It was flawed. It was vulnerable at times. It was fragile. This this city team is just a horrible robotic machine. Uh, they're boring. They're not attractive to watch. They don't have any jeopardy to them. They, they, it's just heartless, soulless, boring. As I say, the the chavs down the road that won the lottery. They don't even know how to celebrate. So, um, thinking about that documentary though and bringing it into comparison to our club, to our team, because we've got to get our own house in order, thinking about it related to United now, I look at that team back then and particularly listening to the Neville brothers, but, but Scholes, uh, Beckham and Giggs, the way they talk about their upbringing at the club, it was hard. In fact... Strategies were used, let's say, that were quite old school by the sound of it. They never go into too much detail, but the way that they talk about it isn't like, oh, it was wonderful. I used to love going in every day. It felt like it, it almost sounded a little bit like military kind of thing. It felt like basically what they were doing, the, the seniors and the, and the coaches and stuff, they were there almost trying to break them. Ethically, is that right? Would that get, would you have to get away with that now? No chance. But when they, what they're doing is we're testing to see if you're strong enough. And what that created was a different type of machine to what City have got. It was a machine in that it was a group of young people who were prepared to, to die for the cause, to do anything for the badge that was on their chest. And Roy Keane used to say, I go into the, you want them in the trenches with you. As I said before, some of, it, some of it reminds me a little bit of that military kind of um, very regimented, very disciplined, very hard. And it makes you or breaks you. What it made was a group of young people who came up as elite warriors for that football club who would go to war for that team and for that badge. 
in a football sense. Um, and that's once you've got talent with that, very difficult to stop, as as was proven. Um, the great thing again, I think that is different to for us compared to to City is that our past informed our future back then. In that we looked at the Busby Babes, we looked at the heritage, the history, the DNA of the club, and you've got people like Nobby Styles, Brian Kidd, who'd won the European Cup with United. Those two. Uh, who were very key figures around the place, Brian, um, sorry, um, Eric, Har uh, Eric Harrison, and of course Ferguson. Characters who were not afraid to look into the past to inform the future, and people say these days United live in the past; they need to move forward. That those days have gone. Uh, yeah, we need to become a more modern team and a more modern club and do things that others are doing well but never be afraid to, to let your past inform your future when you're part of Manchester United because we're unique. And I look at the current group of players and I look at their body language. I, I look at their personality or lack of it. I look at the fact that they can just dump a one out of 10 randomly whenever they feel like it. I don't like the cut of the jib. They don't get it. They don't get what it means to play for Man United. They're a million miles away from it. And that's why I believe it's so important that we get some of these young lads from the under 18s and from the youth academy in general into the team because they're more likely to get it. Um, and we can build around that. Or bring new players in that we can mould into that because the ones that are there at the moment haven't got it. Something really stood out, I'm not going to give too much away about the documentary for those that haven't watched it, but um, Gary Neville said that Ferguson used to go to him sometimes and say, what's wrong? And never would say... Nothing. And he'd say, well, tell your face that. And then he'd say to him, we, you can't have a bad day when you've got that badge on your chest. That's old school, but it made me think of Rashford straight away. Just thought, you can't have a bad day when you've got that badge on your chest. And and that's what we need. That's that's the spirit we need in there. And we've got a bunch of soft asses. They can't cope with it. They can't cope with the position they're in. It's come too soon, too easily for them. Whereas those boys that we're talking about in 99 that were the heart of that team, they they had to fight for it. They had to fight every single bit of the way for that, for, to play for Manchester United. It was never easy. They were always in fear of losing their place, of losing their place at the club and losing their place in the team. And look what it produced. So old school, yeah. But maybe we need to perhaps go back to that in some, some way, if at all possible. We've finished the season with two wins in a row, which is great. Um, I can't profess to have watched the game today if I didn't. Um, uh, so, I, obviously, we won 2 0, which is great. Hoyland scored brilliant. We've got, we've got two wins in a row. We, we build a little bit of momentum going into this final uh, FA Cup final. Um, I'm hesitating because I know Martin has played. I, I, he went down in the first half I saw so I hope he was alright um, I don't know how many minutes he got but he got minutes and hopefully he's okay that's that's a bonus that's a plus we go into it in next week in a much greater frame of mind than we would have done had it been you know on the back of for example, for example the Crystal Palace game so that's great we've got some momentum we've got to build a wave of positivity if we can and we'll build a mentality that, said, that, that, that can upset the odds for the weekend because it's possible it's 11 v 11 I don't think City are that good. I want to see Ahmad start and Garnacho start. I don't want to see Rashford in the team. Amrabat needs to play. Hopefully Martinez is fit. And let's just go and give it a go. In terms of the season in general, um, we've got 60 points. We've finished eighth. People were saying, you know, would you take Conference League or would you prefer not to be in Europe at all? I'd have preferred to have been in the Conference League because I think we'd have had a good chance of winning it. I think we could have blooded some youngsters. I think it's an opportunity to play some of the younger players. But the fact we're not in Europe obviously does give us a little bit more time in between games. And But that's the level we're at, Conference League or not in Europe at all. So um, we could beat City next week and get in the Europa League. I wouldn't have minded a bit of a dabble at the Conference League, just for, for almost for the novelty's sake. But um, we don't get that. So um, if we want to get in Europe, we've got to beat City next week. But the big carrot is beating City because we want to beat them and obviously win the FA Cup. It's it's a terrible season. 
it's, it's minus one, I think, goal difference. 60 points. I think we've conceded 50-odd goals. We haven't scored, obviously, enough. We've had 14 defeats. I said at the start of the season, I think we'll finish between 7th and 10th. And at that time, I felt sympathy for Ten Hag rather than that, that it would be because of him. But as the season's worn on, I do still feel some sympathy towards him. But when watching the mistakes he's made and his, his inability to correct mistakes and to change and to adapt, I think it is he's the manager and, and he's as responsible as anything else for why we finish so low. Um, after the 4-0 against Brentford last year, he changed everything. And after the 4-0 against Crystal Palace this year, he's changed it. It shouldn't take 4-0 defeats to change. And this year, of course, it's too late. We've seen improvement against Arsenal, and a win against Newcastle, and a win today, when he's changed the way we've played on the back of a 4-0 defeat. You shouldn't have to get to that. And by the way, Crystal Palace have annihilated someone again today. They're in great form. I think they're, they're obviously Palace were in top form when we played them, but still, it shouldn't take that. And I, th I think his his um, his race is run as United's manager. Um, he can end on a, on a on a high note, of course, by winning the FA Cup. Um, and in the week, I'll I'll do um, I'll do a, obviously a preview of the derby and, and the build up to it. And uh, I listen, you never know. We, we, we could surprise we could surprise people um, just before I go if you are in the area around the Etihad tonight um, don't get concerned about three or four people um, looking suspicious they're not loitering with intent believe it or not that's the celebration party <laughs> glazes out <laughs>